What did you think when you heard the news about Dr. Graham? I was shocked to learn of his passing. Uh, this man is a, is a saint. This man taught us how to live and he taught us how to die. He was preaching and teaching the good news. He was an ambassador for God Almighty. He had the capacity, he had the ability to change the hearts and lives of people. I first heard of him when I was very, very young, growing up in rural Alabama. And later I had an opportunity to to hear him in person as a college student in Asheville. And a few short years ago, he heard that I was visiting Asheville, North Carolina, and he invited me to come and visit with him in his home, high up on the mountain, beautiful. And we sat and talked. Uh, we had uh, iced tea together a little something to eat, and he was so open and so frank and so candid. Uh, the last time I heard him speak, I think about uh, uh, a little more than 20 years ago, when he came to Atlanta for the dedication of the dome, and he said, this is one of the wonders of the world, and the crowd just laughed and, and cheered. How, what was his relationship with you during the civil rights, the height of the civil rights movement in the 1960s, for example? I know he'd met with Dr. King and Andrew Young, but, but did you have any uh, awareness of him and, and, and um, what his attitude was toward what you were doing? Well, he was very supportive of the movement and very caring about what was happening. He thought and, and really felt in his soul that there was not any place in our society for racism. And I know on one occasion, and I think it was in Tennessee, that they had a rope to separate uh, black people and white people. And he took that rope down. And all across the world, he did what he could to end division. He lived a good life, a rich life, to be 99 years old. What will his legacy be uh, as, as people remember him and um, look upon his impact on this country, on this world? He must be looked upon as one of the builders of bridges trying to bring people together, tear down walls and fences. He wanted to redeem the soul of our planet and maybe create what Dr. King called the beloved community. For a son of the Jim Crow South as he was, born and reared in North Carolina, um, what was different about him that maybe um, he was ahead of the curve in, in changing attitudes across the South and across this country. He felt and believed in his heart, in his soul, that it was not in a room for racism and bigotry. And he thought the message of hope, the message of faith and forgiveness was a message for all people, all humankind. So he helped to make America better. So from your earliest years until your recent years, he has been someone you've thought about, someone that you've admired. How does this impact you? Well, he um, helped change me. I listened to him on radio. I watched him on television. And I grew up, I think, to a significant degree, wanted to be a minister. 
we call the Billy Graham. He taught us the way of peace, the way of love, the way of hope. We were able to speak with Andrew Young this morning, and he talked about how Graham's ministry and Dr. King's ministry, they both had ministries, if you will, uh, maybe on a parallel track, but intersecting at important times in this nation's history. Is that kind of how you see it as well? I see it in a similar fashion. Two, two sons of the South, one black, one white, but they were trying to do the same thing in so many ways, to liberate and to free our region and our nation of our dark past. Do you think he had then a positive impact on Dr. King's ministry and perhaps vice versa? Oh, I, I think in so many different ways they had unbelievable impact on the minister of each other. Is there one point you want to make sure comes across about uh, reflecting on Dr. King or Dr. Graham in his life now? He inspired all of us to stand up, to be brave, to be courageous, uh, to be bold. And I, I can see, I can hear him now. He was just getting all fired up and just going all out. And I, I think so many people, especially in the ministry, uh, tended to, to copy him. They heard him. He changed them. He taught them to show some emotion, and he did it. He made it real.